Hello all my truth seekers. In this video, I will discuss the conspiracy of Mount Hermon and why the government holds so much stake and investment in this area. I've been drawn to it for some reason. I'm attracted to Mount Hermon ever since I heard about it. Well, recently anyway. And now I know why the government keeps this place so heavily guarded. This place is so big. This story is so big and so scary. Let's explore together. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either end the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. This is a subject I've always wanted to talk about. I mean, the history of Mount Hermon, Anunnaki, Grand Canyon, all of it. Yes. I mean, I have been enamored with the Book of Enoch and a lot of historian books and things of that nature, Egyptian Book of the Dead. I have them all. And I've been comparing things. I've been going very, very deep about all of it. Looking at TikTok videos, not many on YouTube. They're so well guarded. But going to the library whenever I could, but mainly I just, you know, get my books from offline. But yes, it definitely opened up a lot of things. And comparing it to the Bible as factual proof, I discovered a lot of stuff that been misinterpreted and false taught, but it necessarily wasn't false taught. It's just that some of us were hearsay and repeating hearsay without actually diving in and reading for ourselves. And in this video today, I'm going to break down all of that. Some of this you already know, and some of this you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I've been so stupid. Seriously. Take a look at this. Um, the whole house abounded with light. And when he was taken from the hand of the midwife, opening also his mouth, he spoke to the Lord of righteousness. Then Lamech, his father, was afraid of him, and flying away, came to his own father, Mathusala, and said, I have begotten a son unlike to other children. He is not human, but resembling the offspring of the angels of heaven is of a different nature from ours, being altogether unlike to us. Enoch's depiction in this passage reveals that Noah, also known as Zisudra, possessed the distinctive trait of being an albino. He bore striking physical resemblances to some of messengers and deities, commonly referred to as the Anunnaki, this uniqueness set him apart from other humans, as the descendants of Adam had a dark skin complexion during this time. What's up, brothers and sisters? I hope everyone knows this logo. Did you know that there was a hidden meaning behind this logo? So let's break it down. We have fallen angels fallen from heaven, hovering over the waters, just like the Spirit did. And what are they doing? They're congregating around a mountain. Now, where do we get that from? And how many stars are right there? The Book of Enoch speaks about 22 angels falling from heaven, congregating on a mountain called Mount Hermon. Right here, by name. Now, when Lucifer originally fell, he took one-third of his angels. What is one-third? Three, three, point three, three. Why is that number so significant? Now, why is 33 so significant? Well, when the angels fell, they landed on the only geological place on Earth that represents their number. 33.33 north and 33.3 degrees east, using the Paris Prime Meridian. So, let's bring this all together. Paramount Logos has a mountain with 22 stars around it. The Book of Enoch has 22 stars mentioned by name that congregate around a mountain and the mountain is literally the only geological place on earth that represents their number using the paris primeridium things that make you go hmm wait till my next video and i'll connect something else with mount hermon now i'm a little confused they say that mount hermon is overseas somewhere around the new israel you all know that Israel, as we call it today, was formed around 1947, conveniently around the time of the Treaty of the North Atlantic in 1949, and when NASA established in 1958. 
I mean, they wanted to block any information about these deities or the flat earth, etc., which conveniently was around the time the ending of World War II. I believe when they found the tomb of King Tut in 1922, which I believe was in the Grand Canyon, they quickly formed a fictitious facade of places in the Bible overseas to throw people off and to hide the true place of the biblical places here in America. Oh yes. Guess what, my truth seekers? Did you know that you can get exclusive commercial free videos on my Patreon? I post my viral, and block YouTube videos on there and more and stories that I wrote. You know, I write stories, people. Oh, yes, I post them on there. I'm gonna start doing my video diary on there pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I need to communicate with my truth seekers, they are lifesavers. I love you all. Oh, okay, I'm supposed to be advertising my Patreon. The link is below. For example, I don't think there is one read of C, that's R-E-E-D of C. I think there are multiple aspects of that description. One near the Gulf of Mexico, near the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, the Gulf of Mexico, near the Atlantic Ocean, where the Atlantis may be beneath the Bermuda Triangle. The second one is near the Pacific Ocean and near California where Israel is, well, that name anyway you know the land they call the city of angels mount Hermon is near louisiana near original egypt i mean why do they call los angeles the city of angels here are the popular answers as colonizers and missionaries moved in the tonga people faced the same hardships and diseases as many other native american groups hence the tonga people which means the Tonga people was not the Indians. They were, yes, Negro people. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm sure y'all get the point. They were already there. Mm -hmm. The land at the banks of the Los Angeles River, the history books decided it was no longer called Yangva. The Spanish moving and deemed it El Pueblo de la Reina de Los Angeles. The town of the Queen of Angels. Yeah, or... Angeles, referring to the Catholic figure of the Holy Virgin Mary. This one small settlement was centered near what it is now, Union Station in downtown Los Angeles. Now, LA historian Doyce B. Nunes points to a map dated 1785 named El Pueblo de la Reina de Los Angeles. However, not everyone agrees with this Nunes person statement. Several competing variations include El Pueblo de Nuestras, Senora de Los Angeles, meaning the town of Our Lady of the Angels. Another refers to original name for the Los Angeles River, which is El Pueblo de Nuestras, Senora La Reina de Los Angeles, or de Rio Porcionquila, meaning the town of Our Lady, the Queen of the Angels of Porcionquila River meaning no one knows anything. The people who claim to be the adventurers probably translated from what the land was already called or stories they heard, kind of like what they do now. With that said, how did Los Angeles in English, called the Angels, how did it get its name? With that, I'm gonna have to go deep. Hey, my truth seekers, did you know that I have a blog? A blog that I post personally selected stories onto. I also have an online journal where I give you a peek at my personal life and more. So please go to the Truth Show Channel dot blog. All the links are below. We must understand the importance of discovering how Los Angeles came to its name. I must go deep because I believe it came to this name from the original origins of one of the stumping grounds of Anunnaki. Now, hmm, let's look at the hieroglyphics, aka the ancient carvings. Well, most carvings. You see the state flowers, you know, Arizona is the cactus, that's their flower. You can see the plant in some of the carvings right along with their state bird and tree. Then there's Oregon, where you see the Oregon grape as the state flower. Hold up, that's a flower? 
Well, I guess it is. Anyway, the bird is a restaurant meadowlark and the tree is the Douglas fir. Then there's Nevada where the state flower is a sage brush. The bird is called a mountain bird and the tree is called bristle cone pine and single leaf pinion. And then it's California where the state flower is the golden poppy. The bird is the California quail and the tree is the California redwood. Then it's Louisiana where the state flower is the catahoula. The bird is the pelican. That you see in many carvings throughout Africa and many find this here in the US. And the tree is the cypress. No need to explain more. I'm sure you all get the picture. And so on and so forth with the uh, states and stuff. Anyway, but to fast forward, I discovered some of the state symbols, etc. Within the area of the old map where the land of Israel was initially located and conveniently where the Missouri and Mississippi rivers are located and connected. This means that Mount Hermon is in Louisiana, which is the original location of the Anunnaki stomping ground and where most biblical events occurred aside from Israel near the Grand Canyon. I mean, think about it. No one knows why Los Angeles is called the City of Angels. Again, all the stories are myths and stories. Some of those areas in the U.S. are so well guarded. Archaeologists haven't found anything in Africa groundbreaking or historical of the magnitude of the findings of King Tut, which I believe was found here in the Grand Canyon and not in Africa. I also believe that thousands of years later, when Moors, Indians, and Hispanic dominated the U.S. and took over most of the U.S., well, the world, the Caucasians, a.k.a. descendants of the offspring of the Watchers, and please note, the Watchers were different races, predominantly dark blue, golden color, but, you know, there was some other color as well. Anyway, offspring of the Watchers, not fallen angels, but we'll call them that for argument's sake. But they are from the Anunnaki, who were called Watchers. They were to report what was going on down here. But they came down here and had intercourse with the inhabitants of the land. They called their offspring Nephilim. And when the Nephilim began to cohabitate with the people of the land, like those of Goliath, then when these entities began to have intercourse with the people, they called them giants and Neanderthals. Those who were negatively affected by the sun had to hide in the mountains. And those mountains are called Caucasus Mountains, where many experiments were reported to have happened. This is why the whites are supposed to be called Caucasians and not white. I'll explain that later. Anyway, they also started to eat each other and eat any animal or bird they could find. The only animal they spared were dogs. Also, where these bad entities were taught and given new age weapons, and they became very powerful upon leaving that cave and went to scavenge the lands. They raped, killed, stole, and plagiarized history and the people. This is also why the Caucasians are predominantly the only race obsessed with space, aliens, planets, wolves, vampires, and so on. They feel their original selves and origins when they do that. Oh, I'm not done yet. You see, the original black Asians were our aid by these Neanderthals and they became the new age Asians we know today. Hence the creative gifts they get from Negroes and their style and flair that they seem to take from our culture for people. Yeah. Indians were later created versions of Negroes, Blacks, etc. The originals are with wool type hair, aka modern Negroes. The ones that God is Isis created are the original inhabitants of the world. Okay, the Italians are descendants of Hispanics, whether they want to believe it or not. The Hispanics slash Latinos slash Puerto Ricans slash Cubans, no matter how much they want to divide themselves and tribes or whatever, they are descendants of Negroes and Indians who was created much later. They don't have the same amount of melanin as modern Negroes, but they do have a little. The redheads are descendants of these fallen angels who had intercourse with the land's inhabitants and albinos were created. So when the albinos had intercourse with these offspring, aka Neanderthals, they created what we see now as today redheads. The original albinos are mainly mixed with the pure blood of what we call the fallen angels and Negro people. And believe it or not, that means Negro people, not they all don't have that white, paley skin. Some of them have regular 
golden skin, dark skin, but they still have red hair. It depends how much melanin got produced in their blood. Okay, so not all redheads are albino. Just want to point that out. Okay, Malcolm X was albino and so on and so forth with that. Now, the Arabs, the ones who believe they're descendants of Abraham who are not they didn't inhabit that land until thousands of years later. They are just descendants of Caucasians or another version of Caucasians or Caucasians in general. You see, thousands of years later, the Caucasians everywhere are reaping the benefits of that bloodshed. But don't get it twisted. Negro people weren't the height we are now. They were a lot taller. Our heights and age descended downward as time went on as a way of punishment for going against the grain of sheep. Hence the teachings of Amin-Ra, who was among the watchers at K.A. Anunnaki, who didn't do what he was told upon coming down here. He made a deal with the Roman rulers at the time to create what many are praising. Yes, Christianity. Christianity is written to favor Caucasians, the race he wanted to make to dominate and rule over majority of the people inhabit, especially Negro people or what they call themselves as white as in pure. So they can seem more angelic, but here's the kicker. They were so lazy regarding the text. They kept some of the original descriptions of the original people thinking no one would notice. And with them banding Negroes from learning and hiding spells with prayers and so on. Hence, in your prayers and our men, I mean, asking the people to close their eyes and hands and bow their heads. I mean, they didn't want you to see their deception. Oh, when the original identities start to seep through, AKA what many are called demonically possessed, they call them brainwashed or demons. You see the original spelling of demon is D-A-E-M-O-N-S. That's D-A-E-M-O-N-S. Why? Because in Greek, D-A-E or day means not. In Hebrew, day or day means pretty. And man is another name of aman or aman or aman or in different ways you can spell that, okay? Pretty, believe it or not, this is going to blow all of you away. The original meaning of pretty is tricky, crafty, sly, cunning, willy, and astute. Oh, yes. When they yell demons, they're calling you slash spell bonding you with these words translated in English, not a man or pretty a man. Okay. They are saying that the possessed is not abiding by Amon Ra's teachings and the original identities or ancestors who were breaking through the spells and through the souls of the living need to praise Jesus. So they were saying, praise him and look at this cross, not Ankh, but cross. Oh, I'm still not done yet. These are spell casting rituals and practices. The cross, holy water, spells, casting words, etc. are ingredients for the spell to be put back on that person. So demonologists or priests who probably don't know they're doing this, who do these rituals are casting spells on the possessed. The true talker who they want quiet again to praise Jesus. The twisted, plagiarized version they created. You are not to praise anyone, especially Jesus. He don't want to be praised. He was invented to deliver messages, okay? He was not to be praised at all. No one is to be praised but yourself. You are the descendants of gods and goddesses. You only to praise yourself, no one else. Now that you know the history, let's go deeper into Mount Hermon and why it was a cover-up. Mount Hermon is described in the Bible as being east of Israel, aka Promised Land, and northern boundary of the Amorite Kingdom, aka Mesopotamia, or what it says in Wiki is a mountain of clusters. Hmm. Now, the map overseas shows that Mahermon, yeah, is north of Israel. But remember, the land of Israel wasn't established not too long ago, around 1947. The surrounding area wasn't called what they're called now until the early 1920s. However, if Mount Hermon is in California, let's just say it's in California for argument's sake, it will be near the U.S., Israel, etc. 
Oh, there are many mountains over there too, if you want to know the cluster of mountains. But here's a twist. There is also another Mount Hermon in Louisiana, and it's near Mesopotamia in Egypt. That's the original Egypt here in America. I did a video about that. I know, I know, I know. I was confused too. And here's the twist. Because the Bible says, no, guess what? The Bible doesn't describe Israel as a land, but a person. Or should we say the term Israel can refer to seven different entities in the Bible. And if we don't know which Israel is in play, we'll become hopelessly confused. Throw in the state of Israel today and it gets even more complicated. So let me try and sort them out as best as I can. So pay attention. The seven Israels found in the Bible will always fall into one of three categories as a person, a nation, or part of a nation. As a person, Israel would be Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes that eventually become the nation that bore his name. God had changed his name from Jacob to Israel, which loosely means he who prevails with God and overcomes after he survived a wrestling match with the angel of the Lord in Genesis 35th chapter 10th verse. However, Israel as a person can also be Joshua. For he is the seed who inherits all the promises, which is Galatians 3rd chapter 16 verse. As a nation, Israel will be the whole nation of 12 tribes. Then it goes in from there and so on. I Meaning the Israel that, you know, Israel, yes, is not a land. Okay. But a nation or tribe. Hence, this is why they just suddenly invented the land thousands of years later to throw people off and hide the true ethnicity of the Hebrews slash Israelites. Having us looking overseas, saying we were from overseas. We were from Africa. The homeland is in Africa. They want to divert our attention over there versus here where we are. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. With this understanding, this means when the Bible talks about Israel, it's talking about a person, tribe, or nation. For what I read in the Bible, they always either took trips to Egypt or were already in Egypt. There was always a lot of activity in the Egypt in general. I mean, always something going on. This revelation proves that places overseas were named later to throw people off again, as I stated several times. I've already proved that the original Egypt was here in America, but just in case you guys need some proving, I give you a little clip of that and you can just watch the whole thing after this video. All right. Everyone is told that Africa is the cradle of civilization and that Egypt is its crown. But the Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians themselves was writing about their homeland. And where do you think their homeland is? Where do you think they originated from? Africa doesn't have stair steps going up it. It doesn't have temples on top of its summits. They could not go and break through the boat on the temples atop those great pyramids. There are none there. And that was the clue that Egypt was writing about the Americas. And the deeper I got into the records, the clearer it got. They started actually saying, and because I'm in love that land so much, he said it's his beloved land, and that word was Mary, the beloved, Mary, M-E-R-I, Mary. And the land, of course, as before, is Ta. Tom. So you have the land, the, the beloved land. Mary. And they kept that name and just put the Ta on the end of it. So Ta Mary became a Mary Ta, we simply say, a Mary Ka. We kept the name that Egypt gave to the Americans. So that was the big mystery behind that $10 million map that Martin Waltzmuller made and then put the name America on it in 1507. And then those who knew and those who were trying to hide things said, wait a minute, you can't put that name on here. And the next time he reprinted that map, it was off, it was gone. Because that's the name that Egypt had given the land. To America. Mr. Brother Caribio for his extensive research.
I decided you guys can just see the whole video later, but these two clips are a little taste of what you're gonna see, okay? Now, this means that Mount Hermon is indeed in Louisiana, near the original Egypt, and they later travel north along the Mississippi River, aka Nile River, that connects to the Missouri River. But I say, it's one big freaking river. I don't know why they want to divide it, but whatever. But we ignore that for now. Now, in comparison, they travel north to the land of Jerusalem, the land of the Israelites. In the Bible, you always read about the conflict between Jerusalem and Egypt, and they don't describe the two places as being very close. I'm just saying. I mean, it says in 1 Kings, third chapter, first verse, Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married his daughter. He brought her to the city of David until he finished building his palace, the temple of the Lord and the wall around Jerusalem. So yes, they built a wall around Jerusalem. No one has found this wall. They say it may be the great wall of China or this wall you see here on this picture. Now, historically and geologically and biblically, this wall doesn't make sense and is assumed to be the wall built for David around Jerusalem. But that could be any wall or have structure of some building or fake prop. Who knows? Now, however, there are several walls around Nevada and California. Of course, over time, it deteriorated and wasted away. But if you Google ancient walls in Nevada or California or you Google ancient dwellings in Nevada or California, you get many, many results, trust me. So what does this mean? It means that upon the rise of Christianity and heavily during the slave trade, they covered up all of this and they lied, twisted, plagiarized, and still enjoying the fruits of these lies and bloodsheds today. I also believe that the Anunnaki are still alive, but in different forms and are helping control our government. Did you all read the stories from these times, you know, during the Civil War times of the sky activity during the Civil War? They were helping, definitely helping. Oh, and let's not forget most of the activity is always here in the U.S., especially in those government areas. This is why Russia, China, and so on want America so badly. They know it is the original land of history and Anunnaki who are described as being entities of color of golden, black, and dark blue. Take a look at these. Where did he got this information? So the ancient Egypt, the original one, not the one that we know of today, is actually in America. I know, that's, it's hard for me to wrap my head around this one too. But did you know that there's more pyramids in North America than there are in Egypt? Which is odd, because you would think that if the Egyptians were from modern day Egypt, there should be more pyramids there, not over here. But how did they get over here in the first place? Also, look at our dollar bill. It literally has a pyramid on the back of it. And that's the Washington Monument, which look a lot like obelisks over in Egypt. Really, the similarities are insane. Also, did you know that on April 5th in 1909, there was an article published about the exploration of G.E. Kincaid, which was funded by the Smithsonian, and where they discovered an enormous cave system in the Grand Canyon while G.E. Kincaid was floating down the Colorado River. And this cave system extended 1,600 meters into the ground. Like, that's massive. And they found Egyptian hieroglyphics. They found tools. They found pottery. They found even mummies in it. They found an entire room full of them. But they won't tell you that because to this day, the Smithsonian is in denial of ever funding such an exploration. And there are claims that G.E. Kincaid never even existed. But that's not even where it stops. Look at this old map of America. It's called T. Amerikan. And in the Egyptian Hieroglyphic Dictionary, Ti Amaru, which means people of the land of the Nile Flood, aka Egyptians. Ti Amaru, Ti Amari, land of the Egyptians. These are the Cherokee and Pawnee native Moors, which were the original black people in Ti Amari, the land of Egypt. And that leads to believe that the Moors of Ti Amari, the land of Egypt, are the original Israelites and the original children of God. In this video, I will give you a deeper insight on the true origins of aliens. You'd be surprised at the lies we've all been told for so many years. Wow. Like gray-haired creatures. Heck, they went far as to stage crashing scenes with fake dummies and actors to reveal what they allegedly saw. But what we need to do is take a closer look at what they really saw. 
As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of light of lightning. Why do you think the slaves said, swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home? You ain't talking about a slave ship. Slave ships float. But if you're asking something to swing low, it has to be flying high. So 3,000 years ago, located 700 miles south of Cairo and the Giza Plateau, at a place called Abydos, there's written on the ceiling beams of the New Kingdom Temple, carved in stone, images of flying contraptions. Y'all can't see them from there, but you get the DVD and we'll zoom in on the party. Here you see. Quite the, the bugs and uh, meal were on. Uh, but anyway, there is one image there that shows black people getting off. So people with dark skin getting off. Not dark, black. Black skin. Really black. Yeah. Were they tall? Yes. Very tall? Yeah. How tall? Do you know? Well, they got out the, uh, the doorway. I don't know how high that is, but... Well, what... Uh, say, say seven, seven feet would be probably a conservative estimate. Um, have you heard about Clark McClellan's uh, statement about that? No. Oh, you haven't? No. The close encounter of the fifth kind is when uh, you reach out and try to communicate with extraterrestrials. The government doesn't want you to do this. There's actually an FBI file on me because I'm contacting extraterrestrials and talking to them, a race of beings, hundreds of millions of years ahead of us. It can go from a light body to a 3D body. It can phase in, phase out, and travel through time and space and they're very conscious beings. One of the most advanced, they too were once us. You see, back in the ancient times, in the time of queens and kings, pharaohs and such, they used to mold themselves like the gods and goddesses with their elongated skulls. These beings are not aliens. They are the gods and goddesses who have been recorded to have flown in and out of the underworld for centuries. As many of you may have saw in hieroglyphics and also in some famous paintings. The flying machines that we're using now, they used that thousands of years ago. Oh, and believe it or not, they also had Wi-Fi, hence the pyramid that was used for that. Aliens who casually travels to you know, the African parts of the world that has the roots of anything black. You see, it was the Africans and certain tribes that used to go around teaching various parts of the world hygiene and the use of incense. Sounds familiar, don't it? Arabs and um, Persians are now known as that, but they weren't that before. Yes, that trade, race, and so on was taken over by the people who are claiming it now as their own. Anyway, getting back to the point of the idea of ancient aliens building the pyramids began and why some academics think racism lies at the heart of many extraterrestrial theories. Despite the fact that you can find many scriptures in the Bible about it, for example, it says in Exodus 22, 21, do not mistreat an alien or oppress him for you were aliens in Egypt. Then in Exodus 23, 9, you should not oppress an alien for you know the heart of an alien seeing you were aliens in the land of Egypt. Then it said in Leviticus 19, 34, when an alien lives with you in your land, do not mistreat him. The stranger who lives as a foreigner with you shall be to you as the native born among you, and you shall love him as yourself. For you live as foreigners in the land of Egypt. I am Yehu, your God. And then in Leviticus 25, 23, the land shall not be sold in perpetuity, for the land is mine. For you are strangers and live as foreigners with me. So that means that these entities were different, but they were that 
much different. They weren't that much different than like everyone else there. They were just descendants of gods and goddesses walking on earth among the living as the people were once before. Hence when he said like you were aliens of the land, his land. This can be explained in the hieroglyphics. But let's move along here. Now, if this went over your head, that also means they embellish the slave trade. Most of us were already here. This is why there isn't much real evidence left despite it being only 200 years. You know it's only been over 200 years when slavery stopped. They lied. And this lie was set during the Greatest Reset, also called the Mandela Effect. If you want to learn more about that, search for this on TikTok or go on my TikTok page or one of my channels here. I'm sure you'll find it. Anyway, well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications when I do post more videos. See you all later. Love you. Bye.